Hello, it's Scott Manley here with Elite Dangerous from scratch. We are in Altair, which has, well, it has a couple of interesting places, Biggs Colony and Solo Orbiter. I wonder where those names came from. Yeah, I mean, the Elite Universe has a lot of, uh, a lot of different places in the Elite Universe that are inspired by, well, popular fiction, uh, popular sci-fi, real places. You know, it borrows liberally from every sci-fi fan's wet dream. Anyway, I'm going off to Solo Orbiter because that is where they're going to sell the next batch of rare goods. And thankfully, because this is a post-edited version, I can uh, just far forward fast the whole thing. So we don't need to spend, you know, a couple of minutes traveling over to Solo Orbiter. Instead, we can watch it at four times regular speed, which is very, very convenient, very, very fast. And pretty much means that I don't have to fill, you know, several minutes with, uh, you know, discussion of space and space-like things, because that's pretty much what you're left staring at for a lot of the game, is space. But now, we are at Altair, we're at Solo Orbiter, and this is a completely different design of station. This is an Orbis station, an Orbis starport. These have a lot of different attachments, you're going to see a lot of variation in these designs. They're kind of the biggest and best, the, the hub ports with the best equipment, generally. Uh, you know, best support for everything on the biggest planets. You dock in these just the same as they do the other ones. I've put all my power into the, my engines because I'm going in as fast as possible. Speed, I, I'm, whoa! Sky is waving her hands in front of my face because she's trying to get my attention and messing up track IR, but actually, I'm, Sky, come on, we're gonna land this thing. Okay, yes, uh, <laughs> normally pilots don't have to deal with kids waving their hands in front of their face. So anyway, on the inside they pretty much look the same, a combination of small, medium and large landing pads. Being a hauler, I get to go onto a small landing pad. All the landing pads in the station are facing away from the exit. If you overshoot, better to reverse rather than to turn around because then you'll have to turn around twice. But yeah, let's put this down gently on the surface and we're there! Ready to trade, ready to make profits, ready to smuggle things. Because, of course, Han Solo, smuggler, just kidding. Or am I? I see my Altarian skin here, a small colony of brightly colored microorganisms form a mesmerizing, ever-changing death route of fashion statement capable of self-sustaining the colony, etc, etc. Basically, I'm going to pick those up and take them a long way, but you'll notice that nowhere here is that uh, Iranian brandy whatever, or Iran and whiskey, it's whatever, I, it's brandy or whiskey, it doesn't matter, it's a spirit. Uh, the problem is, this is a Federation station, and here, Iran and Pearl whiskey is declared illegal. So I've just smuggled this in, and that's uh, sort of by accident, because I did pick Solo Arbiter, because A, Han Solo is a smuggler, and B, this is illegal. Uh, but I was expecting to get caught, and scanned, and fined. So, I, I yes, I can potentially sell these as illegal goods on the black market. Not every station has a black market, but the profit here is tiny. I think what instead I'm going to do is we're going to load up on even more stuff and we're going to travel even further afield. Remember, I said with rare goods, the magic distance is 160 light years. Going beyond that doesn't get you any more profit. So, getting up over 100 light years is generally a good plan. Let's buy this Altarian skin, clean out oh, as much as we can there. Great, 13 tons for 9,854 credits, and we will take this off to a new destination. The question is, where? Okay, having consulted that source of infinite wisdom and cat pictures, the internet, I've decided to go to a place called Kokim. I found this on a list of uh, rare goods routes, which would, you know, of course, be nicely planned out and optimized routes by people that actually know what they're doing. Uh, this station down here will sell me some rare goods. It is um, about 89 light years away, so that's great. We should see decent profit on both of these. It is, however, many, many jumps. Now, the fastest route... Well, the fastest route is great, but I will probably need to refuel like three or four times on this route. The economical route, uh, well, it's going to need many, many more jumps. In this case, uh, 18 jumps, I think, that's going to take me all the way there. Uh, but maybe I don't need to refuel. Maybe I can only refuel once. It should make things a little easier. It'll just be a case of jumping from one system to the next. Anyway, look, we're going to launch. And now we have to appreciate we 
are carrying illicit cargo. We were lucky. We were incredibly lucky. We never get scanned. If we get scanned, we would just have to pay a fine and that would be it. Uh, but to get out, what I'm going to do is maximize my speed through the mail slot. So we're just going to come off the pad. Oh, going backwards there. That's not a good start. Uh, it, many people wonder, I have my throttle set for dual direction, so when I push my throttle down to zero, I actually go in reverse. That's great in a spaceship game, not great in an aircraft game. So we're just going to make sure that we're lined up, and when we get close, we're going to throttle to 100%, and boost to get through this. Yes! So we're going to carry ourselves away from this as quickly as possible, hoping that nobody scans us. But even if a scan happens, you know, we are pulling range on things, uh, it's possible we hyperspace out, and besides, we're leaving Federation space, so it might not be such an issue. So we're heading towards WISE. This is uh, WISE for the Wide Field Infrared Survey Explorer. That was a whole sky uh, survey the thing that went and basically looked for stars. WISE is almost certainly a brown dwarf, since it was identified during an infrared uh, sky survey, which meant that it's not particularly bright and it, it has a lot of infrared. So I'm betting you when we come out on the other side, it will be a brown dwarf. Three, two, one, engage. Uh, yeah, now we get to see whether I was right. Yeah, if you look, I have another video that talks about all these different star types or the star designations, where they come from. I think it's very interesting because, of course, the Elite Dangerous guys did a lot of research. And there we are. Look at it. It's purple. It's not even brown. And since this system shows as unexplored, we should charge up the directional scanner, which comes free with every spaceship. And that scans a few bodies. We'll be able to sell that data for cash. If I wanted, I could point my spacecraft at these and scan them. But it would appear that I have hit a bug. Uh, this is a bug that has been happening in the beta. Hopefully it gets fixed before release where, yeah, your route gets cleared. So once again, I have to go and find Kokim. Okay, anyway, look, we're not going to follow all the jumps because things are... Uh, this is 16 jumps. It's kind of boring to watch somebody jump 16 jumps in 16 minutes. So here's editing time. Yes, you should be aware that every jump takes about one minute between jumping, loading, uh, the frameshift cooling down, and the frameshift warming up. It, it's going to take you about a minute for every step in your jump. But also, on top of that, you probably want to be running your directional scanner early on whenever you jump into a system that's unknown, just so you get the extra exploration data. Anyway, I then encountered a problem, which we would expect. Next destination is Knich Ah Ali. Okay, uh, whatever. Aho? Never mind. My eyes are clearly not what they once were. Ten light years away, and there's going to be. This is going to push. Yes. This is going to push me over the fuel limit. So we cannot make this next jump in our course because there's a limit to how much fuel we can consume from our spacecraft. Uh, if you go above that, it'll say nope. So instead, we need to find somewhere else. But before that, we're going to drop out off Super Cruise because that will cut down my fuel usage. When you're flying in normal space, the fuel usage from your main tank is lower, so that will give us a little more time. So yeah, let's go to the galactic map. We're looking for systems that are named, and actually Viracocha looks like a good bet. Uh, for some reason it was selected, and it has stations! Yes, it has stations. That is very good. Prohibited toxic waste. That should even be completely legal for me to fly in there with my Iranian brandy. So we shouldn't even have to worry about illicit cargo and stuff like that. Unless, I'm, of course, I'm completely failing to read this. Charge the drive and head off into hyperspace one more time. 5.8 light years. So because it's shorter, it's using a lot less fuel. It's using like, I mean, that's half the distance. So that's using a quarter of the fuel in this spacecraft. And that's great, it means that I have a few more jumps of life left in this thing, should this turn out to be a bad bet. I think every station offers refueling facilities, but not all of them offer, like, repair and reloading or outfitting. The things that are in each station vary from uh, station to station, obviously, and there are databases that will let you know. They're mostly compiled by players, as I understand. So set destination for it. 
And off we go. We selected Outpost Clarkey. I'm not sure if Clarkey is a real name or... Uh, I don't know, maybe it's a reference. There are a lot of references to a lot of sci-fi things, but uh, Clarkey? I don't know. Maybe someone that doesn't know how to spell Arthur C. Clarke? Anyway, uh, we have a Type 7 transporter. Now, you can, you can target other spacecraft while you're in warp. You see this is a lawless system. It is an anarchy. That is the way of saying there is basically no official law enforcement. The locals essentially let everybody make their own law, so yeah, you don't get fined for blowing up other spacecraft, and other spacecraft similarly don't get fined for blowing you up, and since you are in a squishy hauler with not very good weapons, you tend to want to avoid other spacecraft as much as possible. So I'm hoping I'm not going to get interdicted, but it's entirely likely, and if so I can show you how to do a, an interdiction evasion. Uh, seven light seconds out, things are looking good, although I do have at least one spacecraft relatively close on scan here. Remember the scanner at the bottom uses logarithmic distances, that means the things that are, the distances are scaled down as they get closer to the center. It just means you can have a, you know, positional information and range information in a much more compact manner. Not everybody likes these kind of scanners, but I think they're fantastic. Absolute, after all, I, I uh, grew up with them. 0.1 light seconds. Remember, just keeping the speed in the blue. 75% throttle is the perfect speed. We have a Viper Mark IV that is close by. I'm just like switching through these things to see if anyone's a threat. Now, once you get into bounty hunting, you can actually start scanning things. Oh, here we go! Interdiction! Okay, so I have to keep my spacecraft. Oh, crap, crap, where is it? I'm supposed to keep my spacecraft pointed at the, the escape vector, but it didn't matter because I just got through this. And I just escaped. Yeah, during interdiction, you're supposed to try and keep yourself lined up to keep yourself stable. Uh, if you think that you aren't going to be able to do it, then um, you should... Oh, great! And yeah, I get an illicit cargo warning here as well. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, I guess this station does actually make you know, liquor illegal. That's super funny. Please don't scan me. It's an anarchy, I'm not sure they actually care so much here. Anyway, what I was saying was that during introduction, yeah, you want to keep your spacecraft aligned with the escape vector, and it will push you around, it will be very hard to do. If you think that you can take the fight, if you think that you might be better, uh, you know, submitting and then trying to escape from that, then set your throttle to zero and you will drop out. If you fail the interdiction test, then your spacecraft will take a bit of damage and you will come out of warp in a in a spin, so it'll actually be slower for you to escape. And it looks like I've made it through the mail slot without getting scanned, which is always a good thing. Line up with the pad and put her down gently for a quick, quick top up of the fuel. 0.39, uh, 0.3, that, that fuel number there is how much tons of fuel you take per hour. So in regular flight, I'm only taking 0.39 tons of fuel per hour. Outpost Clarkey has a full load of fuel, or a fuel load of fuel, uh, something like that. Uh, we could, we should go to the commodities market just to show. So we've come, I don't know, a bunch, a bit of a distance here. And we were going to make 545 credits per ton. We bought it for 758, so that's almost doubled the value of that. That's actually you know, pretty good, but we don't have... Yeah, as you see, beer, liquor, and wine are allowed, but they're not bootleg. Iranian whiskey, Iranian pearl whiskey is considered illicit bootleg stuff, even though it's made with the finest of spices and everything else. See, once again, considered illicit, illegal. 9,000 is the galactic average. I wonder how much I could sell it for here. Let's uh, take a look at the contacts. The contacts, and there's no black market here, so I'm doomed to carry this on to my final destination, regardless of what I think. Well, let's get everything set up. Let's get our navigation to Kokim, set laden once more. Okay, ready to boost out of the mail slot like a bat out of hell or a falcon out of a giant space worm's mouth. Yes, get that reference, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the hauler is hardly befitting of uh, Han Solo, but never mind. 
problem there. There's somebody else hanging through the mail slot here, but don't don't worry. Uh, you can kind of get a lot of room. Many people like to point out you should go on the green side as opposed to the red, but frankly, none of the other spacecraft, many people don't actually care. A lot of spacecraft don't bother. The really big ones certainly don't care. That's one of the privileges of being a really big spaceship. Everybody has to get out of your way or you get trashed. Except for the ones that deliberately ram you. But that's just, you know, part of the game. Kinich, aha, aha. Aha, take on me. Hyperspace on me or something. Uh, come on, waiting for the mass locked light to go out. Uh oh, ship scan. I don't know if they're going to care, but they're scanning me for sure. Uh, maybe we'll charge and get out of here before the ship scan actually completes. Um, no, no fire zone left. I, I think they just gave up on the scan. I don't actually know how long a scan takes to complete from an NPC. I should probably figure that out at some point. But look, we're out of here and it's time for a bunch more jumps. And we all know that that means lots of editing. So, I mean, yeah, in the real game, this is going to take about one minute per jump. So that's only about eight minutes. These numbers, by the way, the time, the travel times and everything, those were arrived at after discussion with some of the early backers that paid to be on the design uh, decisions board. Uh, and as it turns out, you know, one man's immersion is another man's boredom. So you definitely have to strike a balance. Elite does have a lot of traveling. It is very much like a flight simulator flying spacecraft. And I am, of course, just going to skip through this whole transition out there at four times regular speed. Yeah, these speeds were considered to be what the designers or the, the design decisions group wanted. And then after they were deployed in the game, they tweaked these to make things a bit faster to make them more palatable to other players. I think that what they've got is probably on the right side of things. You know, if you're going to have a galaxy, then you do need to have travel times to make the economy work properly. If everything's instantaneous, it makes very little sense. But we're at Hirayama Installation. Oh, Hirayama Installation is the fine as another type of starport. I believe this is an Ocelus starport. Ocelus is like the third type of starport they have in the game. Uh, yep, Ocelus. Now the Ocelus is, I believe these are designed to be like exploration pioneering stations. So they are actually able to move through hyperspace, although they, that's mostly in the fiction of the game. I don't think we've actually seen one of these moving into hyperspace. There is actually a station in the game called Jax, which moves from one system to another periodically. If you're docked at it, your spacecraft gets taken uh, along as well. And part of the fun is, of course, finding this thing. Or it would be fun if you didn't just go to the galaxy map and type in Jax to find it. It has a drive section and everything installed, but I, I think it only moves... Uh, I think it only moves at downtime. I'm not really sure. I'm not sure if it moves while there's anyone there. But I'd love to see that happening. I, it seems pretty cool. Yes, Hirayama installation. Now we're going in through the mail slot. We are speeding, but we don't have to worry about illicit cargo. The speeding warning, incidentally, all that means is if you collide with another player and uh, they then crash, then you get a bounty on your head. So it's basically meant to stop ramming, which is used to be a pretty... Um, pretty much consequence-free way of killing players where you would ram them into the side of things, especially in large ships. It's a lot less of a problem than it once was. Okay. Proceeding to landing pad 29. The Hirayama installation. Traditional Kokim defense party. So basically that's the name of the station and the, the name of the faction that owns the station. Uh, you can basically... You know, a lot of the missions, they aren't about your progression they are about oh look at that there's an asp explorer or an asp scout taking off i'm not actually sure it's an asp the familiar shape of the asp is unmistakable docking successful, docking successful and look look around on what grounds are you scanning me officer you can see all sorts of background text going on there so let's sell this stuff for some money 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 Commodities market, Alterian skin. We are now selling for, f oh, look, we're making a profit of 5,000 on each of them. Look at the amount of money I made there. For those of you who didn't think that trading was worthwhile, there, look at the profit on that. That's pretty darn good. 
Iran and Whiskey are making 14,000 profit on each of these. So, yeah, this is rare goods trading. Look it up. There are routes that have been pre-planned out with all sorts of things, such as this one. The Kokim Spongiform Victuals. They are a staple food of the Imperial military for years. Yay. So... I deliberately chose this station because there would be more rare goods that I could pick up here and I could run from one to the other and make profits. The main limitation being that you're going to have to keep refueling your ship. They are long journeys and uh, making getting the biggest, longest range frameshift drive you can into your spacecraft is really going to help with this. Also, I should point out that since you've been on a long journey, you've scanned a lot of stuff. You can sell this data. Right now, it's only you know 9,000 credits, I guess, for this page. You can sell it individually. Some of those are red because you can't sell them unless you've gone far enough away from the system. You can see it's just like this is the data. We've got locations of these, but we haven't scanned them in detail. Once you scan them in detail, you get more and more information. So it's not worth that much. But if you get an advanced survey scanner that can scan the entire system at once, that's a lot more money to be made. That's how you make money exploring. But we'll actually go and become an explorer next, I think. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.